All right, so over the next six days, I'm gonna release six separate videos on six separate Survivor roguelikes, inspired, of course, by vampire survivors, hence the name Survivor roguelikes. That's just what I'm calling them. In reality, they're more bullet hell action roguelikes, but Survivor roguelike fits for this topic. These videos are gonna be quick, take them as mini reviews, and the structure is gonna go like this. I'll give a brief explanation of the game. I'll go over the game's game modes and the ultimate goal within the game. I'll go over movement and aim mechanics. I'll go over the combat and the sound design because I feel like those two play into each other in this genre. Then I'll go over progression and replayability. Then I'll talk about some of the negatives for each of the games and then I'll give my overall sentiment on the game. To quickly give an explanation of the genre I'm talking about, it's the genre that was inspired by Vampire Survivors. They are roguelike games, generally isometric or 2D, where you enter the run and begin to be surrounded by enemies. You'll kill the initial enemies and then be offered some sort of power-ups which will help you kill the enemies more efficiently. This efficiency stacks and stacks as you continue to kill enemies, level up and get more power-ups. Typically, there isn't many movement options. The most I've seen is a dash or maybe a specific movement ability, and that's because the focus is on observing the chaos that occurs around you. And as your character becomes better and better. Take Vampire Survivors, all you do is move with WASD, choose your power-ups, and then watch as everything around you dies. It's a very simple yet incredibly satisfying experience. Now that that's out of the way, the first game I'm actually going to be talking about is Vampire Survivors, considering it pioneered the genre and made a huge impact on roguelikes as a whole. Again, these videos will be quick, less than 10 minutes, so let's just get straight into the first one, which is Vampire Survivors. It's well known by now that Vampire Survivors pioneered the genre. Everything else came out so quickly after Vampire Survivors, it feels like this is a genre that was destined to boom, or by coincidence, people were just ready to release very similar games so soon after. Vampire Survivors' main goal and the one it exceeds at is providing you with as much dopamine as possible throughout your playtime. Everything about Vampire Survivors and the other games I'll talk about is designed around providing you small to large dopamine hits for your actions. It's a game loop that's so addictive and Vampire Survivors gets it right. The goal of Vampire Survivors is to survive for as long as you can in a stage while completing achievements and objectives that are part of that map. Completing objectives on maps is one of the ways to unlock different weapons and characters. There are a few different ways to modify the game, including hyper mode, which boosts some stats to make the game go faster, hurry, which doubles the clock timer, but you get 25% extra XP, and arcanas, which provides different options that modify the game to give certain weapons boosts or change the way you play. There are multiple maps and characters to unlock, and once unlocked, they'll provide access to many more unlocks, and the cycle continues, so that you'll never run out of things to do and achieve. For the movement and aim mechanics, Vampire Survivors is known for its pure WASD movement, no special movement abilities like a dash or sprint or anything like that, and yet even without those arguably more engaging actions, it remains one of the most intense of all of the games that I'm going to talk about. I feel like movement in Vampire Survivors is usually a lot more purposeful than in other games that might have a dash. This is a testament to the pacing as a whole within Vampire Survivors. Following the movement trend, very little of the abilities are aimed, but you'll want to position yourself to make the most out of the effects that you are producing. The lack of action within these two systems combined would make you think that there is less engagement, but there is still a very nice balance between focus and relaxed gameplay, and that's one of the goals here. Vampire Survivors doesn't want you to have to do anything extra other than watch the chaos that's on the screen. When it comes to combat and sound design, as I said, combat and sound design go hand in hand in this genre, and Vampire Survivors is at the peak once more. Satisfying hit sounds and great weapon effect sounds that are pretty vicious, which is good because some of the evolutions of weapons in Vampire Survivors are pretty powerful. It's also incredibly important that all the effects in Vampire Survivors are clean and identifiable on screen, like the enemies and everything else happening in combat, which is super important in a genre where there is a lot going on on screen. The flow of combat in Vampire Survivors is as you would expect, and while I said there is some emphasis on position to maximize your damage, there is probably just as much emphasis on aimlessly running around and watching everything die, which is totally fine too. This is what people were looking for for, which is why Vampire Survivors has done so well. Being able to aimlessly walk around with some position decisions here and there creates the perfect blend of pace. Combat in Vampire Survivors is a combination of great sounds, effects, clean visuals, and mechanics that help the player have fun. The progression and replayability within Vampire Survivors is found in the achievements, of which there are a lot. There is meta progression in spending gold for upgrades, but at some point that becomes secondary to the achievement grind, and since Vampire Survivors came out, the games that have followed suit keep the trend of stacking the game full of achievements, and it's another thing that adds to the constant dopamine hits the genre is known for. The achievements are nicely spread out with goals in different elements of the game, like live for a certain amount of time on a map or evolve a weapon. It's key to the genre, it seems to have unlocks behind achievements, and in Vampire Survivors it works to great effect, essentially requesting that you always have a purpose when going into a run. 
Vampire Survivors has very few negatives, and if you ask me, the negatives are a much more personal thing here than with some of the other games in this genre. Vampire Survivors does what it sets out to do exceedingly well, so you can only really criticize what you personally don't like or what you'd personally like to see in the game that isn't currently in the game. Personally, I'd love more meta progression and maybe more emphasis on movement and aim mechanics, but the game doesn't suffer without them. So I can't really objectively criticize Vampire Survivors. It pioneered the genre and remains on top. So overall, when you look at Vampire Survivors and the landscape of roguelikes after its release, the impact is unholy. Vampire Survivors pioneered the genre, and usually that means something else will eventually come out to top it, but for now that's not the case, and the king has yet to be knocked off of its throne.